Crossing conventional limits, the Motion Cam Camcopter opens a new dimension in action photography. Like a helicopter, it will hover motionless, move in any direction, up to 50 miles an hour. You can't feel it by the seat of your pants. You don't, yeah, you don't feel it. Okay. The cellular phone has become a business tool practically required for anyone on the go. It has also increasingly become the target of phone fraud. Suddenly I had a bill that came in for around $2,200. Hi, it's Paul and Phil here with something for all you computer jet jockeys. Oh, I'm hitting some turbulence here, guys. We've got the ultimate in PC flight simulators with the answer, guys. The first time a helicopter was used to shoot a major motion picture was 1962. The movie was called Satan Bug, and it was written by Michael Crichton. Hi, I'm Richard Hart. Welcome to the next step in technology. Years later, helicopters are still noisy, expensive, and often hazardous. But an enterprising pair from Austria hopes to change all that. Here's a shot you wouldn't want to try with a conventional helicopter. It's too close to be safe. Too much dirt kicked up by the prop wash. Besides, you wouldn't be able to hear what I'm saying. This is a job for camcopter. Crossing conventional limits, the Motion Cam Camcopter opens a new dimension in action photography. Like a helicopter, it will hover motionless, move in any direction, up to 50 miles an hour, and climb to an altitude of 300 feet. Unlike a helicopter, it can operate from the ground up, in close quarters, even indoors, and not kick up a tornado. It's movie technology that you're going to see a lot in the future. Do you remember the first time you flew a remote control helicopter? <laughs> yes. What was the first few times like? <laughs> well, well, actually, when I flew the first time um, I, a helicopter, I, you know, I was in the air for five seconds and I crashed. <laughs> and uh, then I sold everything. I said, that's it, you know, I, I, I cannot do this. Yes. Austrian Alphonse Mills Colorado is the inventor of the camcopter. It's not a hobby kit, but a completely hand-built platform that'll carry a 20-pound custom-built 35-millimeter camera suspended from a remote-controlled pan-tilt unit. Got a, a generator. This engine comes out of a, a chainsaw. This engine is a 60cc um, two-stroke engine and it's got um, 6.5 horsepower. We really needed something very, very reliable and the most reliable engines are chainsaw engines because they have to work for years and nobody cares about them, nobody services them. The 35 millimeter film camera has a tiny video camera built inside, and the picture is transmitted from the chopper to the camera operator on the ground. Now, we're on the black and white video camera now. Yes. Yes, we are on the black and white video camera on the monitor over there. And what would this be used for? Uh, you use it as a control picture because when you're flying, you have no control of uh, what you're shooting. You only see the helicopter, so the director needs to see the picture. Uh, the video camera looks through the lens, and uh, the picture is transmitted to the monitor. Beyond the remote pan and tilt functions, Alphonse can roll the camera inside of its tube housing. So instead of rolling... Instead of rolling the helicopter, which is not possible, um, you roll the camera, which gives you the impression of a, a total roll. And you can do 360 degree rolls? Yes, yes. For our opening helicopter shot, pilot Joseph Yobstel must perch precariously on the roof of a van traveling about 40 miles an hour. It takes both hands to operate the remote camcopter, so there is no holding on. Meanwhile, Alphonse operates the camera controls hidden in the bushes. Me, all I gotta do is remember my lines and keep the car between the lines. Here's a shot you wouldn't want to try with a conventional helicopter. Here's a shot you couldn't get with a conventional helicopter. Here's a shot you'd never get with a conventional helicopter. 
I have to stop. This is a job for camcopter. No. For camcopter. For camcopter. Did you see that? Wait a minute. Which one's the throttle again? Now, if you think flying a helicopter is a snap, think again. There are three axes of movement. And you've got to do all this without being in the chopper. You can't feel it by the seat of your pants. You don't, yeah, you don't feel it. Okay. 45 to 50,000 will get you into your own camcopter, and that includes a few lessons from Joseph. The next step, Alphonse predicts his camera will replace all those TV news choppers. He says they'll get there sooner, fly closer to the action, and get much tighter shots. Hey, stay tuned. Camcopter film at 11. These things are difficult enough to control when there's no camera attached. This is a medium-sized radio-controlled helicopter. And watch what happens to the angle of the blades when I do this. Forward, back, see how they tilt? That's the way it goes forward, backward, left, and right. And if I move this switch left and right, it moves the tail, kind of like a rudder. And this, of course, is the throttle for going up and down. Now, assuming you can control all of these things at once, you can make it do rolls, loops, and even hover upside down. The best part is if the engine dies, you can still control it all the way to the ground because it auto-rotates, just like the big guys. Uh, one this size costs 1800 to 2000 bucks, but you can get started for 500 That way you won't feel so bad when you crash it the first time. Up next, the cellular phone thief's nightmare, the black box that could save you money. How can you tell which call is being made by a bad phone or an Ill illegitimate phone? The red bar here indicated that, and that call would have been terminated. Plus, fingerprints without ink for the detective of the future. Even with dual airbags, power windows, air conditioning, cruise control, and a powerful six-cylinder engine, the Mazda 626 still costs less than a four-cylinder Camry LE. And you can take that to the bank. Steven? Thanks, Mrs. Johnson. I love fresh squeezed. Oh, this is Tropicana Pure Premium Grove Stand. Really? It tastes like fresh squeezed? No, it's Grove Stand. I swear it tastes like fresh She said it's Grove Stand. Dad, Steven says it's fresh squeezed. You heard your mother. It's Grove Stand. It's fresh squeezed. Darlene? You know, it does taste fresh squeezed. So what is it? Fresh squeezed or Grove Stand? I still think that Steven, it tastes... stay out of this. Never from Concentrate. Tropicana Pure Premium Grove Stand. The taste of fresh squeezed. And also try Pure Premium Original and Home Style. In a war-torn land, there is an endangered world, often overlooked, on the brink of extinction. But what can we do? How can we help? In a continuing series, the Discovery Channel takes you to Russia for a rare glimpse of this amazing landscape. The Balance of Nature. Tonight at 10 Eastern, 9 Central, only on the Discovery Channel. The cellular phone has become a business tool practically required for anyone on the go. It has also increasingly become the target of phone fraud. Yeah, it was a nightmare, actually. I averaged about $160 a month worth of usage, and then suddenly I had a bill that came in for around $2,200. Michael Martellaro won't have to pay for all those calls he didn't make, but his cellular phone service will. Now enter this computer, the next step in telephone fraud detection. Already, it is stopping every illegal call placed at this test site in Los Angeles. What we're really doing is denying access onto the cellular network. So we're doing pre-call uh, denial. In order for a thief to make unauthorized calls on your home phone, he would have to break into your house and physically pick up your telephone. 
But to use your cellular phone, a thief can be miles away. All he needs are the two numbers assigned to your phone. Well, when you purchase a phone, uh, all the manufacturers have embedded in it electronically into a chip an ESN, or electronic serial number. And when you purchase that phone, you are then, as a user, given a mobile identification number, or MIN. Your phone number. Right. Those are your two account numbers with your phone. Your cellular telephone broadcasts your electronic serial number and mobile identification number every time you make a call. So a determined high-tech thief can snatch those numbers out of the air and use them in his phone. All a thief needs is an electronic device like this that anyone can buy, although we're not going to tell you how or where to get one. The thieves then take another cellular phone and reprogram its ESN chip to match yours, thereby making a clone of your phone, an electronically identical copy. Using your MIN, the thieves can pose as you and make as many illegitimate calls as they want. For example, at this particular cell site, we've seen the same account come up in a very short period on 10 to 20 different phones. Calls were coming in and out as I was placing calls. Uh, you know, I was cutting off my customers and uh, I ended up having to change my whole number. But now it's kick out the clones. This is TRW's phone print, a telephonic terminator that cuts off any clone call before it ever enters the phone system. We have two cellular phones here, identical. One of them is legitimate. It has an electronic serial number that came from the factory. The other has been cloned with that same ID. Well, here, here we go. Jeff Phillips is going to make a call on one of them. I'm going to make a call on the other. And we're going to see whether it's possible to detect which one is the bogus phone. Now, this one is dialing a number in a different area code, so we can identify on this screen as each call comes up. Now, that's mine. That's, that's the your phone. Okay. And you just dialed another one. And? And there it is. Okay. How can you tell which call is being made by a bad phone or an Ill illegitimate phone? The red bar here indicated that, and that call would have been terminated. The red bar on my call says it's a clone. Now, yes. yours is a black bar. So. Right. In that case, we would have been allowed access into the cellular network. How does the phone print do it? What we do is we look at the ESN, the MIN, and we also establish a fingerprint of the electrical characteristics of the radio wave. You heard right, the phone print is an electronic fingerprinter. It takes advantage of the fact that every cellular phone adds unique anomalies to the signal as it transmits. Small differences that, just as with human fingerprints, are enough to distinguish it from other phones. Phone print stores a digital snapshot of the authorized user's transmission. Then, whenever the cell site receives a call from that phone, phone print compares the transmitted fingerprint with the one it has on file, and it either connects or terminates the call. You can actually watch the process as phone print displays the various calls being made on a cell system three-dimensionally. Turns out one particular phone with a particular serial number has characteristics that always put it right about there on the graph, this little blue cluster. If somebody tries to use that serial number and the characteristics end up somewhere else on this graph or fingerprint, it means it's a bogus call. He gets terminated. The phone print system is a breakthrough because it doesn't force you to punch in some special access code for protection or use an encryption scheme. It's transparent to the user. And at least one industry expert figures it can cut phone fraud by 80 to 90 percent. It could even lower cellular phone rates because the cellular carriers will no longer lose all those millions of dollars to fraudulent users. A slightly different approach is being taken by Southern New England Telephone and some other small systems. It's artificial intelligence software developed by GTE called Clone Detector. What the program does is monitor everybody's phone bill every month and flag any unusual activity, a foreign area code or unusually long call. You can and should do the same with your own bill. Coming up, now that we have computers that can read fingerprints, what's the next step? Getting all those fingerprints in one place. And climb into the cockpit with the answer guys for the latest in flight simulators. Joysticks are for sissies. This is the virtual pilot. It's an actual flying yoke that looks and feels like the real thing. All the controls are within easy reach of your thumb. You got fire buttons, uh, thr oh, uh, throttle controls. Travel arranged through Continental. One airline can make a difference. One pass lets you earn free travel faster than any other airline. That's the difference on Continental. 
Reinhold Bertlev had a key role in the building of Porsche's new 911 Carrera. Did he design the engine? The radical suspension? No. Instead, Reinhold and his co-workers have perhaps the best job in the world. They test drive every new 911 on the Autobahn. If Reinhold likes your car, we're pretty sure you'll like your car. Is getting into your briefcase more of a job than your job? Old-fashioned briefcases have two positions, open and closed. Introducing the first briefcases to split the difference. Samsonite's new smart attachés. They open all the way when laid flat, but a patented smart hinge tells them to open like a portfolio when upright. So you can get to your work without all the work. The smart attaché series, new from Samsonite. Look into the future, Wednesdays at 10 Eastern, 9 Central on Beyond 2000. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was hosting my first big business dinner and I paid with my Visa card. Turns out I was over my limit. I was so embarrassed I didn't know what to do. So I got the American Express card and it never happened again. Call 1-800-THE-CARD. We can take your application right over the phone. Applying for the card was one of the easiest things I've ever done and smartest. And anyone who's ever gone anywhere knows it. I have a place to cash checks, get my mail, and get help when I need it. My dad said, the minute you get a job, get an American Express card. He said, trust me on this one. I've gone everywhere with it. And here's a tip. Sign up for membership miles, and everything you charge on the card will earn you program miles. So you can keep on traveling. So call now for the American Express card. You can apply right over the phone. It's really worth it. It helped not having a preset limit. I got cash on the go. I can call 24 hours a day. That helps. Go anywhere, and it's with you all the way. Don't delay. Just dial 1-800-THE-CARD. Motion pictures and television shows have led many of us to believe police check suspect fingerprints against this huge database kept by the FBI wrong. We're not even close to that ease of use yet. Here in the meantime is how fingerprint technology works and how it might work. The print is stabilized. The uh, vapors polymerize on the fingerprint itself and make it quite hard and durable. And it's, it's uh, quite difficult to get a fingerprint off of this type of surface. Before they can be used as evidence, fingerprints have to be lifted. Methods to do that have gone beyond the traditional dusting to gas, glues, infrared, and laser light. Surfaces long difficult to work with, such as duct tape and styrofoam, are now yielding prints. Also in development, a method to date fingerprints to establish how long they've been at the scene of a crime. The bad news is this rapidly growing collection of prints is overwhelming law enforcement. The lifted prints can be scanned into an automated fingerprint identification system, or APHIS. This computer not only stores the image of the print, it stores the mathematical relationship among the lines and ridges and translates it all into digital code. It is a characteristic here that's not on here. I don't have that characteristic, so I'm going to go back and close the line. Automation still has a long way to go. For instance, the computer hasn't been built yet that can read the latent fingerprint at the crime scene in this photograph. In fact, it's tough for a human. So this photograph is blown up to a size big enough for a human to distinguish the lines and the ridges. That person then makes a tracing on a piece of ordinary tracing paper like this to make it easier for the computer. But that has to be shrunk back down with this camera to its original size. This is cut out and taped on to the card that will be fed to the computer. Now it's automated. The advantage of a digital image is that a computer can use it to make a fast match with other prints in the database. As an example of what the computer system can do for us now, the Richard Ramirez Night Stalker case. On the computer, it took less than two minutes to identify that fingerprint, whereas it would have taken anywhere from 16 to 20 years doing it by hand. The automated fingerprint information system can solve old cases. A 30-year-old rape and murder case, for instance, was solved after a routine drunk driving arrest produced prints that matched some left behind in 1963. The next step is to do a search of every fingerprint in the country, maybe the world, 
all at once. That's just what the FBI is in the process of doing right now, of acquiring a new, totally state-of-the-art electronic uh, transmission fingerprint uh, system, and this will be based on the latest technology and image capture. Interpol could manage a global fingerprint database. Prints found at terrorist bombings, for instance, could be sent digitally anywhere in seconds for review. The information superhighway will have a lane reserved for law enforcement. And there is great hope that with the advancement in computer technology, we will see color digital mugshots. Next up, look out. The Answer Guys pilot the next step in flight simulator. Moving through some clouds right now. This portion of Discovery is brought to you in part by Federal Express. Tonight, somewhere amongst the important documents, the catch of the day, the tools, the toys, there is one package more priceless than all the rest. The golden package. It must be watched over, and come what may, it must complete its journey as promised. But which one is it? Ah, no one knows which one is the golden package. So every package will be treated as if it were. Once in a blue moon, something comes along that alters the status quo. In the new millennia, you'll find doors that swing on Teflon, not grease. You'll find a unique steel spine that makes the cabin exceptionally rigid. In fact, you'll find a luxury sedan that rivals Lexus and Mercedes. But because it's not sold in a luxury division, you'll find the millennia starting at just $26,000. The new millennia from Mazda. Under conditions like these, the Pentax IQ Zoom 90WR doesn't break, it snaps. In a continuing series, visit Russia for a rare glimpse of a fragile world. The Balance of Nature, tonight at 10 Eastern, 9 Central, only on the Discovery Channel. Some of you have been writing the answer guys of late, asking for tips on how to cheat on video games. Now, you know we can't do that. However, we will go this far. Here now are Paul and Phil with a few accessories and peripherals to make you a better computer pilot. Hi there, I'm Paul. Well, and I'm Phil. We're the Answer Guys, currently cruising at about 13,000 feet over San Francisco. Yep, hang on, i got to make a quick announcement. What'd you say? I just introduced myself as Captain Paul, told them the in-flight movie would be Ishtar. How exciting. We're at the offices of Flight Computing Catalog. It's a mail-order company that sells aviation computing products. We'd like to show you a few things that will unquestionably enhance your flight simulation experience, beginning with the Microsoft 5.0 flight simulator. Moving through some clouds right now. Most flight simulators look more like video games, but the 5.0 software actually uses satellite imagery, so what you see looks more like the real thing. This is not an animated image of San Francisco you're seeing, it's an actual satellite image. It also has much more realistic flight modeling, which means that the flight scenario you go through is much more realistic sells for about $64.95, which makes it affordable for most computer owners. Now, to get the complete flying experience, you've got to have the right equipment. Joysticks are for sissies. This is the Virtual Pilot. It's an actual flying yoke that looks and feels like the real thing. All the controls are within easy reach of your thumb. You've got fire buttons, uh, thro oh, it's a throttle control, very precise trim control here. This was designed by a master aircraft builder, and it only sells for about $100. <laughs> Working in conjunction with the yoke, we've got Thrustmaster rudder pedals. Sharper turns, better control, and lots more like the real thing. It's about 150 bucks. 
And now, the complete executive cockpit. Thunder Seat is the next step in realism. Now, Phil's got an attack helicopter game going on. What's unique is the chair he's sitting in. Thunder Seat was developed for the U.S. military, and it takes any incoming audio signal and produces unique auditory vibrations. You not only hear the sound, you feel it in the chair. Hang on. Makes it much more realistic, I'll tell you. Now, the seat itself costs about $300. When you add the stuff on the side of the monitor shroud and this table that's... Hey, I got incoming! ...swings in and out, you can spend about 600 bucks. Ooh, look out. And now what may be the ultimate in flight simulation fun, my friend Paul is sitting inside Fly It. This is a mechanical motion platform simulator. Actually gives you the feel and the motion of flying an airplane, and it interfaces with all of your PC simulation programs. Paul! Oh. Hey, bank left! Oh. Isn't that great? Bank right! Go! Oh. Pull up! Oh. And dive! Ah. You didn't black out, did you? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you very much. Right now, I'm flying the Falcon 3 flight simulator. We're at an F-16, and hang on, quick snap roll. Whee! There, hope you're not having dinner right now. Anyway, this, of course, is fun, and it's educational. One thing that's really great is, with a modem, you can link up with another friend with a PC, and you can have a dogfight. So, Polly, how are you doing oh, in here, no, pal? Oh, oh, oh. What? Phil, I was at 25,000 feet. Well, you're not now. Uh, thanks to my buddy here, I just crashed and burned in a $30,000 flight simulator. And set up like this, that's what Fly It costs, yeah. about $30,000. But this is a commercial model with full licensing for commercial use. If you want to set one up in your house, it's a lot less. That's right. You can get this unit supplying your own computer for about twelve nine. dollars Yeah, and if you want just the base platform and chair, it's under $2,000. Yeah, it's a uh, lot of fun. I'm going back up, Phil. There's bad guys to shoot down. All right, you get with it. If you've got a question for the answer, guys, why don't you send it to us? Oh, oh hey, hey, Phil. Yeah? Uh, the address is on the screen in here. Oh, let me take a look. Yeah. Hey, looky, there it is. Send it to the answer, guys. Care of the next step. 1001 Van Ness Avenue, San Francisco, California, 94109. Shoot that zip code, Paul. Uh, uh, Roger, over and out, buddy. He's Paul. I'm Phil. We'll see you next time. You might tell your friends and family you're not interested in video games, but somebody out there is buying them. Flight simulators, outside of business software, are the largest selling computer program. At 100 bucks a piece, more than a million were sold last year alone. That's it for this time. Please join us on the next Next Step. Up next on the Discovery Channel, find yourself in Europe in search of the missing links on Balance of Nature. Then find yourself in the most mysterious magical place in South America, San Augustine, on Terra X. Explore your world. squeezed orange juice. I wonder what the occasion is. Glad you like it. I wonder if I should tell them it's actually Tropicana Pure Premium Grove Stand. You know I love fresh squeezed. Yes, I know. Maybe it's our anniversary. Maybe I should tell them it's Grove Stand. Or then I could get another anniversary gift out of this. <sighs> Never from Concentrate. Tropicana Pure Premium Grove Stand. The taste of fresh squeezed. And also try Pure Premium Original and Home Style. Explore America's last true frontier as the Discovery Channel goes Alaska Bound. An eight-part series, Fridays at 10 Eastern, 9 Central, only on the Discovery Channel. They will surprise you, amuse you, and even touch your heart. A very special Discovery Sunday presents a rare opportunity as an intimate family drama unfolds you'll have the chance to see just how human-like these non-humans really are. Meet the people of the forest. Sunday at 9 Eastern, 8 Central, only on Discovery Sunday. Next, the Russian lynx faces extinction on the Balance of Nature series. Then, investigate the monsters of the rivers of the tombs on Terra X. And magic keeps outsiders away on magical worlds coming up on the Discovery Channel.